Alright, so we're gonna install the Alpine ILX W650. We're gonna install the ILX W650. It, of course, will go right here. For now, uh, I have everything taken apart. There's a lot of, I've taken my Jeep dash apart so many times. I didn't have a factory head unit, so I didn't think that was relevant to include here. There's lots of videos about how to remove the factory head unit. Now, let's just cover the wires up first. Uh, ignore this. This is something dumb I have that's going to be removed. This is where you would plug directly into the Jeep itself. That's where you would use this CAN bus uh, or the, yeah, CAN bus, the pack, which is the CAN bus adapter. This guy will plug right into here. Uh, this mess, I broke these little Fakra, F-A-K-R-A clips. Uh, I've ordered some more off Amazon, but for now they're broken. This one will go to your GPS satellite system. I don't use that one. I use the GPS and other radios. This radio doesn't have that, so I'm just taping it off. This is that uh, antenna, this piece here. I'm not gonna open this one because I already have one in here. Essentially, it would be this little black piece right here would plug into another piece and have that connector on top of it. But again, I broke mine, so right now we're just using it taped up, but I ordered some clamps to fix that better. Down here, is where your this little gray wire right here let's see if we can get into there so this little gray well this one right there a little gray wire very tight uh, you would have on these two screws here so back behind these two screws back there you can see the little hole there and a little hole there that is where the Uconnect module was. I removed it and it leaves a mini micro USB port, the male side. So this adapter uh, will clamp right on there. This is a nicer one than the one sent me previously. This is the AX USB Mini B uh, and it has a little clamp guy to connect to that clamp guy. So it's going to be hard to see this, but essentially the wider part goes towards the bottom and you can hear it click. So now this wire, I will run up to here, so let me get this straightened out a little better. Now run this wire to here. And this little messed up splice wire. This is where my dealer tapped into the cigarette lighter for power for the backup camera that they installed. Alright, so now this should go to the USB in the console. We'll test that out later, of course. Uh, right now, uh, it's hot as balls in Kentucky, so I got the cool. So like you can see right up here, it's 89 degrees. And uh, so I got the AC going, so it might be a little loud. Alright, one of the first things I like to do, I've installed a lot of head units here. One of the first things I like to do is just put in the microphone, because that's uh, and then we can just focus on here. By the time I plug the head unit in, I just want to button everything up. Uh, I find the easiest way to do this, the easiest way is to go through the A pillar. I'll have it mounted somewhere around here, probably right there. That will clamp on there. No, that's not very good. Here's the factory microphone. So I try to get it close to there. Just don't know where's a good spot for that. All right, for now I'm gonna put it there. It just kind of slips on there. I would think it would, because I'm going to run the wire right through here, so that might be a pretty good place. We'll see. The Sony clamp was a little better, actually, because it clipped right on here pretty good. This one's a little wide, so uh, I don't know where else I would put it. All right, so this may not be the best spot, but I'm going to put it right here, because uh, this is pretty close to my mouth. It's about two or three feet. Not two or three feet. Yeah, maybe two feet from my mouth. Uh, it's not going to scratch anything, and I'm going to run the wire up through here anyhow. 
so it should be pretty perfect. Uh, but we'll show that in just a second. So first you want to pop this guy off. Uh, you can use uh, like a pry tool kit, but I already have this off, so I'm just going to pop it right out. Also, these little white clips will fly off. They're all over the place in the Jeep. Uh, they're cheap. You can order a new one for like 7 bucks on the kit, so I'll put a link to that in the description. So you want to stretch this cord all the way out. I'm going to go ahead and put this guy up top. So you can see it clamped on. So you can see it clamped on there. And the next thing I do is just tuck it into here. See, it slides back there real easy like same thing here it just you can just get it right back there and this whole thing just tucks right in there boom now here we are right in here and now you just take this right through here you can see how I have it obviously if I had two hands this would be easier Pull the slack out, and once the slack's out, you can put this guy back on. There's your speaker if you ever want to replace that, which is a huge pain in the ass. So now we're coming in through here, and we just want to go along this back. Just like I have this other wire that you shouldn't have, uh, you just tuck things in there. Uh, you can see my finger poking out. We're just gonna put the wire right through there. So once you can get over the hump, like right here, then you can pull it out pretty easily. Prior to that, it's a little tricky. So now you can just kind of tuck it in a little groove here. It's pretty self-explanatory. There's a couple little pieces to go under, but it's fairly easy. Again, this is the Alpine radio, but I've used multiple wires the same way. The uh, next tricky part, just for dexterity purposes, is getting through here right I got big old hands so sometimes it's a little rough but that one went through pretty smoothly all right so now you can see it's tucked in nice and neat back here and then it comes out right here all right so now we're pretty much ready to start putting the head unit on so I'm going to use these pieces again. There's a little R on here to tell you which side's right side. And it's, we're going to screw that in. So again, you would be, unless you buy that extra piece, you're going to be using those plastic ones. Uh, but they're fairly self-explanatory to get on. And when you go to the right side, the correct side, the holes line up pretty much perfect. There's no other way to get them in there. I don't know if you can see that in the video or not, but if you go to the other side, they don't line up quite as right, so even if you didn't see the little letter there, it kind of only fits one way. And they didn't line up perfectly with the Sony. You could drill some holes in it, of course, but my Sony went... My Sony started having problems before I even got to that point, so... Uh, also, a side note, According to five car stereo, Alpine screws are different, so you can't just interchange random ones. So we're just gonna line this up again. This is the right side. So you can see it's a near perfect front screen alignment, so it should be perfectly flat. These two screws fit just fine. Now we're gonna do the other side. It also has an L on it. And the holes line up just fine as well. It only came with four screws, so I'm super nervous that I'm going to lose one. Alright, so there you can see clamps on just fine. I guess we're ready to start setting things up now. So I'm going to unwire this. So this is the USB port. Remember, uh, it goes up, which is not how you would think it would work. I don't know why it does that. It seems, I guess, to stay out of the way of the other wires because you have these wires here, but I don't know. It's the longest wire, so I'm going to plug it in first. Again, this is going to the USB port in the console for the 2016 Jeep Wrangler. I'm sure other years also work, but... I'm going to plug in this set of wires just for my camera. 
it goes pretty much one way. This is a white clip. It just clips right in there. It doesn't really snap. It goes in. And that's going to be this camera wire. We'll go to the yellow one that says rear view camera. Again, I like how this plastic is here. That way you don't have metal touch in to cause any kind of interference or shorts. Uh, again, right now I don't have an, ampl an amplifier and sub to hook all this up to. I will do that later in a separate video. This one again is the radio antenna. It just goes in right there. Uh, again, you would plug yours in back here and then plug it in, but I already have it taped up like that very professionally and I don't want to mess it up. So. Uh, and then the red one goes to the microphone, which is this super long wire we just ran. And it plugs in right there. So now all we have left is this big guy. And I'm going to turn the Jeep off first before I plug all that in. I don't know if it makes a difference, but we'll see. Alright, so now, all I need to plug in is this. The gray guy goes here. And then, this cord goes in this one that says remote. And then this black wire should plug in right here. So now, in theory, as soon as I turn this key on, this bad boy should come on. Gonna set it there temporarily. Close the door because it's hot as shit. Now let's just see if it works. Boom. Again, this is with the Crutchfield Ready Harness. Uh, with that, I mean, it's 25 extra bucks, but it's a super easy install. I don't have any sound yet, so that could be a problem, but let's just see. So there's the radio. I do have sound there. So let's go to. I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. So let's go to. All right. So let's just see if the steering wheel controls work right off the bat. So that's the volume up, volume down. I'm going to do track change. It does. Alright, so. I don't know how to. Alright, so uh, now the first, next thing to check is to make sure our backup camera works. And she does. And now the real test. Hold this. This wire is plugged into the console of my Jeep. Uh, we want to make sure this works. That was the problem with the Sony, is it wouldn't work when I went through. So I'm going to plug this into my OnePlus 7 Pro. Right on the bat, we got Android Auto popping up. And I got to follow the instructions on my phone. All right, so now we're going to try it again. Let's just plug it in. See if this works. So right now I get the so the parking brake is engaged. All right, so now it's saying I'm not to continue. All right, so now I'll put the parking brake on. It worked. I didn't change anything. I just waited a second. So now we're going through the initial setup of Android Auto. Just teaching my son about old rap music. Some Will Smith in here for you. All right, so Android Auto seems to be working fine. There's still a piece of plastic over the screen, so it's going to look a little better. Uh, but as far as I can tell, everything appears to be working just fine. Well, let me try to play a song, make sure the tracks work. Yeah, so the change controls work, the volume works. All right, so let's start the nub in the left hand side. It doesn't do anything apparently. Let's hit the nub on the right hand side. 
Changes your source. Oh, the nub might mute it. Nope, nub doesn't do anything. The VR button. Over here. Oh, that's great. That takes you right to Google Android Auto. I like that. Alright, so if I hit the phone button, it takes me to my phone call screen. I gotta blur that out because it has people, but uh, that's pretty good. And if I hit the VR button, if I hit the VR button, uh, it takes me to Google uh, Assistant. So that's great. So all the steering wheel controls are working pretty good. Uh, I would like a play pause button. I don't know what this middle nub supposed to do, but I wish it did a play pause. All right, so let's do just some initial setup, sound system. Let's get our clock set up. I don't know what that means, clock adjust. So it is now 1.30. We'll set it to 30. All right, so now we set to 1.30 p.m. Dimmer. I'm going to set the auto key illumination. Oh, yeah, let me try that. If I turn the lights on, does those keys those light up? I think they do. Let me turn it up a little brighter. Yeah, they seem to be lit up. It's daytime, so it's hard to tell, but... I'll bell tell at night. Because if you want to reset it, I don't want to do that, so let's go back. I wish there was a way to remap the keys, uh, the steering wheel keys. So just the sound. So I do like this, where you can kind of move it and then hit this button to go back to center. And then there's the simple bass treble, or you can hit the EQ where it has some built-in guys like Rock, and that will adjust the EQ accordingly for you. Or if you want to get fancy, you can do all this high-level shit that's beyond me. Uh, so let's just go back to simple EQ. I'm going to put it on Rock, and let's just try. This will do... Alright, that button goes to Android Auto as well. And then this one takes you to your phone calls, which is good. Uh, let's just see if it works. So this button. Repeat after me. What would you like me to repeat? Subscribe to 5 after 12. You said, describe the 5 after 12. Yeah, pretty much close. Repeat after me. Oh, I gotta hit the button. I hit the steering wheel button now. Hit the steering wheel button. Repeat after me. What would you like me to repeat? Tony sucks. You said Tony sucks. Alright. So, uh, I gotta do some testing to make sure this USB port will work just fine. Like I said, that was the problem with the Sony, is it didn't like it going through uh, this system here. So, I'll do some more tests, uh, and then I'll make a full review of all the features, including... I don't like there's not really a home screen. Like, this is your home screen, essentially, right? This is... I do like you can see the camera at any time. That's pretty good. But, like, on the Sony, it had a big clock up here, right? Uh, it is charging my phone. It does have enough juice to charge it. I don't know if it's a fast charger or not. We'll see. I'm like, I don't use Sirius XM on here, so that's going to be useless to me. Uh... I'm not going to have anything else plugged in USB, so I don't really know why I need a separate one of those. I'm not going to use an iPod, so uh, I wish they would change this home interface. I don't know if there's any kind of display. No, there's no way to change the background or anything. So you don't have a lot of options on here, but it does look good. It seems to be running pretty fluidly. Like I said, it doesn't go anywhere. There's nothing to change. This is all you have. That's why you have this little six icon block to get to right here. Like, I don't think there's any way to change that wallpaper back there. If I hold these down, nothing happens. Uh, I'm going to unplug this. So, it should work. So, it's unplugged now. It should uh, be on Bluetooth automatically. Yeah, it is. Alright. Uh, let me put the dash back together now. All right, so now you essentially just gotta tuck everything in here. This is the good part about this radio being so thin is that you can just kind of shove everything in there however you want, because it should pretty much all fit without problems. There's a lot. <laughs> you know, it's some, I'm gonna 
I'm not done messing with stuff. Once I get it fully done with everything, if I decide this is the radio that I'm keeping long term, then I will straighten these wires up a little better. But now you can see I'm just shoving all this shit in here. And it's going to fit just fine because this radio is so small. Think So, I mean, everything's tucked in there and I got plenty of room. I can put my fingers back here behind it. Now all I got to do is screw this in. So I know a lot of people aren't going to want to pay 50 extra bucks for this, but it fits pretty great. Now we're just putting these little screws back in, and then I'll put the whole dash kit back on. Or the whole dash back on with the dash kit. I might also want to order some more of these because I lose these all the time too. You can buy them at Lowe's or Home Depot, of course, but uh, you should probably use my Amazon link so that I get a cut of the money. I should also note there's a metal bracket that normally goes back here that I've removed. Uh, I removed it a long time ago. You don't really need it. Uh, it I think this rail would still work perfectly fine with that in place, but I just removed mine for something a long time ago and I've never needed it since. So the key here is just to make sure nothing's in those holes where the air conditioner is going. Make sure you're not pinching any wires back there. A lot of times you can take these out, make it easier, but I'm kind of in a hurry, so we're not doing that. So there you can see how perfectly this fits. It's a little end in there, but <laughs> so yeah, if you remove these, it's easier. They just pop right out. So now I can see. All right, so I tried taking these out uh, to make it a little easier to put in. I can't get this one corner just put in just right. As you can see here, it fits pretty much perfectly. There's a little, so if you're super OCD, this might, but I mean, I think it still looks better than the other one did, the uh, Metro one. So this could just be my poor installation skills, or maybe I need to move some stuff, I don't know. But right now, I don't have time to keep messing with it, so. And I'm gonna take all this apart anyhow, I'll put my subwoofer in. So for now, uh, this is what it looks like. These guys just slide over. This little knob is how you get them in and out. But once you get them, again, just make sure there's no wires blocking the air conditioner hole. And then they just slide in and snap in place. Same thing here, just make sure there's no wires blocking it. And this guy just clips on here, just snaps in. And there's a little red clip in the back you push down and then it just snaps into here as well there's a mute button there as well all right that's the not, this one's a mute button i wish there's a way just to turn the radio off because uh, i don't want to use the radio but essentially you just kind of got to hit something that doesn't work no i don't know how, how you close the radio then I don't really know how to turn the radio off. Uh, so right now it's not muted. So the radio's still going. But when I plug in here, it should work. Backpack and a cell phone and a love. And then, of course, we won't peel this little guy off. Uh, I will say the screen's probably not as good as the Sony. The Sony looks really good. This looks kind of dull. Uh, I guess we can. But again, the Sony didn't work the way I wanted it to work, so it doesn't really matter how it looked if it didn't work. Uh, this is a pretty good fit. Like I said, I can adjust this probably afterwards, uh, but for now, I'm tired of messing with it. I think I'll just ship the whole thing up some. Uh, I'm all right. I take the whole thing out and slide this up better, maybe.
I don't know. Uh, but, like I said, the plastic ones, the 6511, didn't look great neither. So, these look a lot better than that did. Alright, thanks for checking me out. Uh, I'll have further reviews on this setup. I'll review both the radio itself uh, and the Android Auto and CarPlay functionality on different videos. I don't need to tell you what EQ you set on there. Can you push that? Doesn't do anything if you touch it, but tells you what EQ you're on and tells you your battery. It's odd it shows that battery being so low when I'm actually at 51%, 52% here. But anyhow. Uh, I'm also going to try to use, let me just, I'm going to use probably this Anchor Powerline one. This is what Reddit, Reddit recommends uh, for Android Auto. This one, this white one's an old LG V20 cord. And I also ordered a Google specific cord. Uh, anyhow, thanks for checking me out. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments.